Precious samples collected from an asteroid are to be moved to a specialist laboratory in Texas in the next few hours. Well, NASA has started the process of opening and removing the asteroid samples from a canister, Osiris Rex, for the first time in more than seven years. For the first time in US history, NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission successfully collected a pristine 4.5 billion year old sample from the surface of an asteroid. In May 2021, the spacecraft embarked on a 1.9 billion kilometer journey back to Earth, carrying asteroid dust and rocks from Bennu. After a two-year, four-month voyage, the mission achieved a groundbreaking milestone in September 2023 when the sample return capsule re-entered Earth's atmosphere at a staggering speed of over 44,000 kilometers per hour. This marked a monumental achievement in space exploration. The asteroid sample, like an ancient time capsule, contains material from the early solar system, offering scientists invaluable insights into Bennu's origins and its possible connection to a water world. It also expands our understanding of the history of the solar system. What secrets do Bennu's rocks and dust hold? How might these discoveries reshape our understanding of the solar system's formation and the origins of life? And what's next for the OSIRIS spacecraft? Join me as we recount the extraordinary return of the OSIRIS-REx sample capsule and delve into the fascinating findings it has already revealed. After seven years of space travel and meticulous data collection, OSIRIS-REx returned to Earth, or more accurately, passed by Earth, to deliver its precious cargo. On September 24, 2023, as the spacecraft reached a point 100,000 kilometers from our planet, it released the sample return capsule. The spacecraft then fired its thrusters to avoid Earth, setting off on a new mission we'll discuss later. This release had to be perfectly timed and precisely angled to ensure the capsule hit its target, a 600 square kilometer area in Utah's desert. To put that into perspective, it's roughly the size of Chicago or the Isle of Man. The capsule entered Earth's atmosphere at an astonishing speed of 43,000 kilometers per hour, making it the second fastest human-made object to do so, just 3,000 kilometers per hour slower than NASA's Stardust capsule. It endured an incredible 32 g-forces during re-entry, which is 32 times the acceleration due to Earth's gravity. For comparison, standing on Earth subjects you to 1 g, and most people lose consciousness at 4 to 5 g's. Today's astronauts experience about 3 Gs during launch, while trained fighter pilots can tolerate up to 8 to 9 Gs for brief periods, aided by specialized suits. The 32 Gs sustained by the return capsule are almost unimaginable, a testament to its extraordinary engineering. The scalding hot capsule blazed through Earth's atmosphere, reaching peak temperatures of approximately 2,700 degrees Celsius, nearly half as hot as the surface of the sun. Ground-based infrared trackers followed its fiery descent, while the 120-gram sample of asteroid Bennu inside remained shielded from these extreme conditions by an advanced thermal protection system known as PICA Phenolic Impregnated Carbon Ablator. PICA, a cutting-edge ablative heat shield, dissipated more than 99% of the vehicle's kinetic energy, keeping the interior temperature below 75 degrees Celsius and preserving the sample's integrity. Ablative shields like PICA function by sacrificing their outer layers during re-entry. The immense friction from the atmosphere generates intense heat, causing the shield's material to melt and vaporize in a process called ablation. As the outer layers burn away, they release gases that carry the heat away from the spacecraft, ensuring the capsule's interior remains cool and safe. Within minutes of re-entry, the capsule slowed enough to deploy its first parachute, stabilizing its descent. At about 16 kilometers above the ground, Radar systems locked onto the capsule, tracking it to within 10 meters of its expected landing zone. For the final 1.5 kilometers, a second parachute deployed, gently slowing the capsule to a safe landing speed of approximately 18 kilometers per hour, the pace of a skilled cyclist on flat terrain. The entire journey from atmospheric entry to landing in Utah's rugged desert landscape took just 10 minutes. After years of meticulous planning, months of rigorous training, and several rehearsals, NASA's recovery team promptly moved in via helicopter to secure the capsule and its invaluable cargo. To protect the asteroid sample from contamination, the capsule remained sealed until it was transferred to a clean room for decontamination. However, opening the sample canister proved more challenging than expected. Within weeks, 
scientists at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, successfully opened the capsule's outer lid, revealing approximately 70 grams of dark gray rocks and dust outside the inner sample canister. This unexpected bonus material from Bennu was analyzed and found useful for scientific research, though it wasn't as pristine as the material stored inside the main canister. Extracting that pristine sample, however, required months of effort and the invention of a specialized tool. So, why did opening the canister take so long? Several factors contributed to the delay. First, the bonus material complicated the process. Each particle had to be painstakingly removed, cataloged, and stored, adding significant time to the operation. Remarkably, the bonus material alone exceeded the mission's original target sample size by 10 grams. Second, all work had to be conducted inside a nitrogen-purged glove box, a sealed, enclosed box continuously flooded with inert nitrogen gas to prevent the sample from reacting with Earth's atmosphere. While essential to maintaining the sample's pristine condition, the glove box environment made the already delicate tasks of handling and cataloging the material even more challenging. This meticulous care ensures that every fragment of Bennu's ancient material remains uncontaminated and available for groundbreaking research, offering unprecedented insights into the history of our solar system. The biggest challenge during the disassembly of the touch-and-go sample acquisition mechanism, TAGZAM, canister came from two of its 35 fasteners. These stubborn screws, infiltrated by dust from Bennu, had their threads effectively stripped, rendering them impossible to remove with existing tools. Imagine going through the monumental effort of retrieving this capsule after its arduous journey to Bennu and back, only to find yourself unable to open it. But true to NASA's ingenuity, the engineers quickly rose to the challenge. They devised a new screwdriver-like tool, specifically tailored for the task. This custom tool, featuring specially fabricated bits, made from a unique grade of surgical, non-magnetic stainless steel, was designed, manufactured, and rigorously tested. Only after passing stringent tests could it be introduced into the pristine environment of the nitrogen-purged glove box, ensuring the sample remained uncontaminated. Thanks to this innovative solution, the curation team was finally able to access the canister's interior three and a half months after the return capsule landed. Their efforts revealed an additional 51 grams of pristine Bennu material. When combined with the previously collected bonus rocks and dust, the total sample mass exceeded double the mission's original goal. This valuable material was carefully cataloged and divided into smaller samples. NASA has ensured that at least 70% of the Bennu material will remain preserved in pristine condition for future generations of scientists to study. Meanwhile, over 200 scientists worldwide are already beginning their research, analyzing these fragments of the ancient solar system. So, why is this asteroid sample so special? Imagine holding a fragment of the early solar system, a relic brimming with clues about the origins of life and the formation of planets. The material from Bennu contains pre-solar grains, microscopic crystals that predate the Sun itself. These grains preserve the signatures of ancient stars that lived and died long before our solar system existed. By analyzing the composition of these pre-solar grains, scientists can uncover details about the types of stars that once illuminated the cosmos. For example, low and intermediate mass stars primarily fuse lighter elements such as hydrogen into helium and over time, they may produce elements like carbon and nitrogen. In contrast, high-mass stars, with their immense pressure and heat, can forge even heavier elements like silicon and iron. When these massive stars reach the end of their lives and explode as supernovae, they release elements heavier than iron, scattering them across the universe. These stellar remnants are eventually recycled to form new stars, asteroids, and planets. By studying the pre-solar grains within Bennu's sample, scientists can piece together the story of the solar system's building blocks, offering a glimpse into a time long before planets like Earth existed. Just a week after recovering the capsule, researchers got their first look at the bonus asteroid material, or regolith. While Bennu likely separated from a larger asteroid one to two billion years ago, its chemistry and mineralogy remain a snapshot of conditions over 4.5 billion years ago predating the formation of planets. This makes Bennu a unique time capsule, preserving the primordial ingredients that shaped the early solar system. 
As scientists continue to explore this ancient relic, the secrets it holds could revolutionize our understanding of the universe's history, and perhaps even provide insights into the origins of life itself. Pierre Hennecourt, a cosmochemist at the University of Arizona and a member of the OSIRIS-REx team, revealed that the initial analysis of Bennu's sample contains pre-solar grains, originating from small and medium-sized stars, as well as supernovae. This discovery supports the idea that our solar system was enriched by a diverse range of stellar sources long before it formed. Preliminary examination of the asteroid's material revealed a treasure trove of carbon, nitrogen, and organic compounds, key ingredients essential to life as we know it. NASA's OSIRIS-REx science team also identified evidence of water in Bennu's history, specifically in the form of water-bearing clay minerals. These findings align with prior spectroscopic surveys of Bennu, suggesting that the asteroid may have originated from a larger celestial body that once contained liquid water. But how did these building blocks of life come to exist on an otherwise inhospitable asteroid? And why is there evidence of water? Interestingly, the ingredients for life are not unique to Earth. They are abundant throughout the universe. Organic compounds have been discovered in asteroids, meteorites, moons, nebulae, and even interstellar space. All that is needed for their formation are carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen, the third, fourth, and fifth most abundant elements in the universe, respectively. These elements are created within stars and dispersed across the cosmos when stars die. As Carl Sagan poetically put it, we are made of star stuff, and Bennu, with its organic rich composition, is further proof that the basic materials of life are widespread. However, the presence of amino acids and other organic compounds does not necessarily indicate the existence of life. Bennu, with its lack of an atmosphere and extreme temperatures ranging from negative 73 degrees Celsius to 116 degrees Celsius, is far from a suitable environment for life to develop. Instead, these compounds demonstrate that the raw materials for life are widely distributed across the universe. In Sagan's words, the organic molecules found on Bennu are like scattered musical notes, not yet a symphony. Yet, these pristine samples hold immense potential to unlock the chemical reactions that preceded the emergence of life. More intriguingly, planetary scientists such as Sarah Russell from London's Natural History Museum and an OSIRIS-REx team member, highlighted that the sample is dominated by hydrated minerals. This finding suggests Bennu was once part of a larger body that contained water. The sample's mineralogy revealed evidence of dynamic transformations caused by the presence of water, including the formation of clay minerals and salts left behind by evaporating water. Among these minerals is serpentine, which resembles rocks found at mid-ocean ridges on Earth, areas where molten material rises from the mantle and interacts with seawater to create new crust. Additionally, Bennu's regolith contains pyrotite, an iron sulfide mineral often associated with hydrothermal vents on Earth. These discoveries suggest that Bennu's parent body experienced processes similar to those on Earth, hinting at an active past shaped by water and heat. Even more remarkably, the OSIRIS-REx science team discovered phosphates in the Bennu sample, essential components of DNA, and by extension, critical to life on Earth. The presence of these water-soluble phosphates suggests that billions of years ago, Bennu may have been part of a much larger, water-rich mud ball, or even a world with active geology and an abundance of organic compounds. While there isn't yet enough evidence to confirm that Bennu originated from an ancient water world, Harold Connolly, a geologist at Rowan University and OSIRIS-REx mission sample scientist, noted that the traces of prolonged warm water activity in the samples point to a parent body at least 10 kilometers wide, possibly larger. Ongoing research will delve deeper into these clues, but it's awe-inspiring to imagine that Bennu could have come from a protoplanet or large asteroid that shared key characteristics with early Earth or icy, ocean-bearing moons like Europa and Enceladus. So, what else can we learn from the Bennu samples, and what lies ahead for the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft? The data and materials returned from Bennu will provide scientists with years of groundbreaking research. Experts in planetary science, geology, astrobiology, chemistry, and other disciplines are eager to analyze this unprecedented sample. 
While our understanding of how the solar system formed is already robust, the Bennu samples allow scientists to refine, validate, and even challenge current theories, sparking new questions such as, did the solar nebula that formed our sun and planets originate from a single ancient star? Or was it enriched by multiple generations of stars? Generations of Where did Bennu's parent body form? And what elements and compounds made up its structure? Could asteroids like Bennu have delivered water or organic compounds to Earth during its formative years? These questions, and many more, will keep researchers busy for decades, unlocking new insights into our solar system's origins. As for the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft, its journey is far from over. Approximately 20 minutes after releasing the Bennu sample capsule into Earth's atmosphere, it ignited its engines to embark on a new mission. Now renamed OSIRIS APEX, OSIRIS Apophis Explorer, the spacecraft is headed toward a new target, the asteroid Apophis, which it will reach in 2029. During an 18-month campaign, OSIRIS APEX will map Apophis's surface, analyze its chemical composition, and study how it changes during a close encounter with Earth. In a move reminiscent of its Bennu mission, the spacecraft will approach within 16 feet of Apophis's surface and fire its thrusters to stir up subsurface material. While it won't collect a sample, this maneuver will provide a rare glimpse into the hidden layers of another near-Earth asteroid. You may have heard that Bennu has a slight chance of colliding with Earth in about 160 years, with odds of less than 1 in 1,700. Although the likelihood is small, the OSIRIS-REx mission has significantly improved our understanding of Bennu's orbit, helping scientists better predict its trajectory and mitigate potential risks. The initial findings from Bennu's samples have already exceeded expectations, offering an extraordinary glimpse into the building blocks of our solar system. And with the OSIRIS Apex mission on the horizon, the mysteries of asteroids like Bennu and Apophis are far from finished unfolding. What secrets will they reveal next? And that ends today's video. If you found this video fascinating, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future updates on Bennu, Apophis, and other groundbreaking scientific discoveries. Let us know in the comments what you think these findings mean for the future of space exploration. Until next time, keep looking to the stars, because the universe always has more stories to tell.